Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, gonna be another race review. Seems like that's sort of the only videos I've been making recently, but I had a really good race uh, a few days ago now. Managed to come away with my first ever win. As I say that, it is wasn't the most competitive race I've ever entered, but a win's a win, so I'm gonna take it. It was called Midnight Man 70.3. Um, they do do a full distance there and a shorter distance as well, I think. Bit of a different race. It starts at 6 p.m. and runs throughout the night. That made it quite hard, like nutrition-wise, to figure out what would be best and yeah, what to eat throughout the day and trying to figure all that stuff out, but we'll get onto that. So basically, my plan going into this race was to basically try and execute a similar race to what I did previously at Holcomb. So it's swim with good technique. Don't put in a huge amount of effort in the swim, still put in effort, but keep it a little bit reserved so that my shoulders don't blow up. Bike hard and then basically see what I've got left for the run. So yeah, we'll go on to, I'll start with the swim. So, oh actually, we'll start with like the nutrition side of things, I suppose. Um, so my plan with that, because it starts at 6 p.m., usually you're starting at like 6 a.m. and then I have breakfast at 4 a.m. and would have had dinner between 6 and 8 p.m. the day before. So I try to replicate that, but shifting it basically. So my plan was to have a big breakfast, um, get as many carbs and stuff in as I could in breakfast, and then basically just keep up, keep topped up on my glycogen stores throughout the day with snacks, um, a light lunch, and just, just carb things that I know that my you know, sits well in my stomach, basically. So that was all fine. Um, don't think I really did anything wrong with that. It, it, it felt fine. Um, felt like I had plenty of energy, didn't feel too full or too stuffed or, or whatever. So I think that was all okay. Obviously got there, I don't think it was about an hour and a half before, racked the bike, got registered, got my race number, which was 43. And then onto the swim. So like I said, it started at 6 p.m. Um, this meant that for some reason, I think the weather, it tends to get worse throughout the day. So in the morning, you tend to have quite low winds um, mainly. And it tends to, I don't know why, the, the weather tends to feel a little bit better. And then as it gets throughout the day, especially the wind, the wind's the main thing. That seemed to, that always seems to get worse throughout the day. So I was half expecting it to be quite windy. Looked at the forecast, it was very windy. Um, so I kind of knew it was going to be a bit of a tougher day out than usual. What I didn't expect was this, the lake's only small, it's a two lap course of 950 meters. What I wasn't expecting was the lake to have any chop, but it was so windy that it did. So I was a little bit worried about that, but got in the water, took a few strokes, and honestly, the chop wasn't actually that bad. But what I do think is that whilst I was swimming, like I say, my aim was to swim with good technique and not put in too much effort, because that worked really well at Holcomb, like concentrating on technique rather than effort. I tried to do that with this swim. It kind of started well, but where it was a little bit more choppy than usual and also where it was really hard to sight because the boys were so far apart and that chop and stuff, it meant that I was basically lifting my head quite a lot out of the water, which something that I've been doing in training a lot is really concentrating on, on having my head, hips and heels like all level in the water. I was swimming more like head up which basically I think affected my technique. Also, it meant that my shoulders blew up quicker than usual, and I think it was the same thing that I'd done in my first couple of 70.3 races where, where my shoulders just blew up instantly, and I, yeah, technique goes out the window and it ends up being harder than I expect. That happened, um, so it wasn't my best swim, to be honest. I think I did my time. Should have had this ready, really. My time was 30 minutes and 56 seconds, which was a 132 per 100 yards. So not, not the best swim. Definitely not nearly what it was uh, at Holcomb my last couple of races. But either way, I came out the water in fourth, I think, um, which wasn't too bad. But like I say, it wasn't the most competitive race. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Then onto the bike, had an okay transition, um, stumbling around a little bit with my shoes and, and bits like that. But I mean, it was what it was. It was like a minute or something. So the bike course, I should explain first, is it's meant to be 13 laps um, of this of this like little circuit in an industrial estate. It had, a f I think it had four dead turns in it or three dead turns. I can't quite remember now. Lots of turning, lots of tight turns. A bit like a crit, like it felt like a, not that I've ever entered a crit, but it felt like a really cool crit circuit almost. A um, lot of surgy because obviously where you slow down to it, almost a dead stop for the turns and then have to speed back up again. Pretty much no elevation, there's hardly any elevation at all if I'm honest, um, which was nice, but 
yeah, it was a tough circuit, especially with the wind. So my plan was to take the first like two laps hard, almost towards like a thresholdy power, just so I can try and figure out who was ahead of me um, and where I was. I couldn't end up figuring it out basically. So um, yeah, so took the first two laps hard and then sort of settled into a nice tempo, which was around the 260 watts. And yeah, and then basically, long story short, just sort of held that similar sort of effort for the next however many laps, 10, 11 laps. The wind did feel, there were certain parts of the course where the wind was horrendous. Like when you got a headwind, it was horrible. When you got a side wind, it wasn't too bad in terms of like speed, but it was handling of the bike. Um, I'm still sort of getting used to these deep wheels on this bike. So that was a little bit scary initially, made for a tough day out. Uh, felt a lot tougher than what I think it looked if that makes sense, the course as well, the laps, I think it was seven kilometre loop. So you, and if you had to do a dead stop four times, that's in seven kilometres, you're coming to a stop. It makes it really hard to get, you know, a good speed throughout, throughout the course. It was, yeah, it was pretty brutal to be honest. So yeah, but anyway, I came out with a time of two hours, 26 minutes and 48 seconds. I think I averaged 250 watts with a normalized of 255 watts or, so, or something around there. This is where a massive mistake came in. Like I said, it should have been 13 laps on the bike. My theory going into this was rather than try and count laps, because I know that I'll end up missing count, basically I would go until it got as close to 56 miles as uh, by the end of the lap as possible. That really messed me. <laughs> That really messed me up. I got to, I think I got to, I don't know, like 36 miles or 35 miles or something like that. And then from there figured out that it was just over four miles per loop. So I would need to do like another five loops. In my head, I was thinking, I'm sure I've done an extra loop, but that wouldn't make sense because that would only bring me to 53 miles rather than 56. So I was like, well, it must be an extra loop then and it will just maybe be a long course. That was stupid of me because it was 53 miles. I ended up doing an extra lap on the bike. That lap, the last lap as well, was I, I span it in quite easily as well to try and flush out the legs and get ready for the run. So it cost me 11 minutes in total on the bike. So the bike should have been two hours and 25, uh, two hours and 15 minutes. But again, was a really short course. It was like 53 and a half miles, I think, is what everyone else seemed to come in at. And mine was 57 and a half miles. A little bit annoying. Is what it is, learning curve. I should have lapped my watch or a bike computer or done anything basically and should have counted laps because yeah, that's a that's a big mistake and it cost it's the biggest mistake I've had in a race because it's cost me the most amount of time, which is eleven minutes. The the rest of the bike, it was pretty good. Something that I've I've been thinking about is I really need to get a bike fit. I think I think yeah, I think I need a bike fit. My knees are starting to do weird things, my hips are doing weird things getting a few like aches and pains and stuff, especially on the longer sort of rides um, where you're putting out a lot of effort. So I need to I need to invest in a bike fit, I think, probably do that soon. Came off the bike, um, again, had an okay transition, wasn't the best, wasn't the worst. Stumble a little bit trying to get my shoes on, but I think that's, that's fairly normal. I think when you're, you know, your legs are a bit fatigued and stuff and you're trying to get shoes on. Um, but yeah, anyway, that was again like a minute and something, so not too bad. I came out onto the run and my legs, first few steps I could really feel my legs were heavy but after like maybe 800 meters to be honest with you my legs felt pretty good um, it was a four lap run course so my idea was to take the first lap at a 6:30 ish minute per mile um, based on how the legs feel because that's what I held in Nottingham throughout the whole run so that's where I'd like to be so I pretty much did that I actually got overtaken by someone within the first half lap and then they stayed ahead of me for like maybe a full lap and so my idea was just to try and sort of roughly hang on to them as much as I could but I don't want to go over 6.30 minute per mile too much because because that was a really solid run for me in Nottingham and if I go too far past 6.30s I know I'll end up blowing up so I sort of stayed at around that 6.30 for the first couple of laps and en uh, ended up actually catching this guy again he faded off a lot I was getting some weird stomach feelings. It wasn't, it was almost like a bit, I don't know, it's hard to explain. It was almost like stomach cramps, but not in a way where it usually is, if you know what I mean. It was, yeah, it had a lot of weird stomach thing. Ended up 
sort of fading and coming back throughout the run a little bit, but never to the point where I felt like I had to stop. So yeah, something to take note was, I think I still maybe need to practice more nutrition, hydration strategies and stuff, but, but yeah, anyway, held that for the first couple of laps, um, caught back up to this guy, he faded off um, by quite a bit actually. And then the third lap, I was in my head trying to figure out where I was still, because I still wasn't 100% sure that I was at the, the start of the race. By the end of the third lap, I did figure out that I was in first, and I was in first by quite a bit, to be honest. Um, obviously, would have been first by an extra 11 minutes had I not messed up the bike course, but yeah, I think I was probably ahead by, I don't know, maybe a good six, seven minutes by that point. Um, and then the fourth lap, because I was in first, and I knew I was in first, I really didn't want to fade um, and blow up and not take the win because it's my first win. So I ended up slowing it down just slightly, maybe like 20, 20 seconds per mile or something like that, just so I knew I could hold on. And if someone did somehow come past me, not that I thought they would, because like I said, my lead was quite big, then I'd have something to, to give back as well. So ended up coming in with a time of 121.58. Again, this is a very short course. It was like 12.4 miles, so what's that? I don't know, over half a mile quite a bit over half a mile, maybe even like a kilometre short. So that's, you know, that's, that's quite, quite a bit short again. Um, and that's like a 6.38 minute per mile. Again, probably would have been a little bit quicker had I not, like, or well, not faded, but had I not slowed down a bit towards the end. They were all sort of around the 6, 6.33, 6.36, 6.34, 6.32, 6.32, and then sort of, yeah, 6.46, 6.50. Um, so yeah, so maybe it would have been maybe around the 6.35 or something, but yeah, happy with that. Felt pretty strong the whole way through. Um, again, the course was, it was um, a fairly fast course, I would say. Um, had a couple of like, not heels, but just like real gradual sort of inclines, which the first lap you didn't really feel. Second lap and third lap you started to feel a little bit more than by the fourth lap. You could definitely tell they were there, but nothing crazy. And that gave me an overall time of four hours and 22 minutes. Would have been four hours and 11 minutes had I not done an extra lap on the bike course. But that was enough to give me first place. My first win is the trophy I got. Kind of cool. Midnight Mad Triathlon 2023 first place. Um, yeah, so overall I'm pretty happy with that race. Um, there's definitely a few mistakes. The big one being... Obviously not counting laps on the bike because that cost me 11 minutes, which is just stupid and a little bit annoying because I think this 4 hours and 11 would have actually been their course record as well. I haven't seen anyone do any faster than that, so it is what it is. Uh, future learning curve, obviously. Swim, I was a bit disappointed with, to be honest. Each swim I've been doing has been getting better and that one was one of my worst, so it's a little bit annoying, but something to work on. My pool swimming's been going really well, so I just need to figure out a way to translate that into open water swimming, I think, and swimming in a wetsuit. But that's, for you know, it's good that I've got some stuff to work on. Um, bike, definitely the bike fit, because my legs didn't feel quite right. And then run, I suppose, just keep on, um, yeah, running. So I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, if you did, please make sure you give it a like, comment any questions or thoughts you have. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time for some more triathlon-related content. Peace.